All right, so we're on uh, page 12, section 0 0.3, the motion of the moon. We talked about how the sun seems to move across the celestial uh, sphere. Well, the moon does too. The moon seems to move. The moon appears to move in relation to the background stars, just like the sun. And that's because the moon is actually moving. It's orbiting the Earth. So we have the Earth here. We have the moon here. And the moon goes around the Earth about once every, do you know? Day. No? Month. Night. Month. Year. The moon goes around the Earth about once a month. That's why it's called a month. It came from moon. Shortened to month. Isn't that cool? So it takes about 30 days. As a matter of fact, it's 28.5 days, something like that. 29 days. A regular lunar cycle of changes occurs every 29 days. Month comes from moon. All of the light seen from the moon is reflected light from the sun. The moon doesn't, isn't glowing. What happens is the sun, I'll put the sun over here. You know what I just happened to have? So, no, guess again. Do you know why? Because it's 
completely blocked. Because it's in the same direction as the sun. The sun's so bright you can't see the moon. So we call this the new moon. That's the new moon. It's not visible. Now, in actuality, the way it shows in this diagram and the way I'm holding it here, it looks like the moon is pretty close to the earth. That's not how it is in actuality. If this were to scale, do you know what that word means, to scale? If we reduced the size of the earth and the moon down to where the, where the earth was actually this size, the moon would be the size of a tennis ball. It wouldn't be as big as this model. It would be the size of a tennis ball. That's how big the moon is compared to the earth. And the moon is a lot farther away from the earth than you think. Here's how far away the moon actually is. That's how far the moon actually is from the earth if we did it to scale. A tiny tennis ball. It's about a tennis ball about 20 feet, 25 feet away from Earth, maybe 30 feet. We launched ships and went up there and walked around on the moon. USA, USA. Y'all remember that? You know what year it happened? You don't remember. You weren't born yet. 1969 is when the first one landed. There's been like 12 guys that have walked on the moon. Five guys. Five guys now? No, I, I, I'm just saying like... <laughs> like the like the birds. Yes. <laughs> okay, so uh, no one's ever been back. You know why? It's hard to get there. It's expensive. That's an expensive trip. You thought going to Vegas was expensive. Try going to the moon. Um, so anyway, uh, anyway, so we, I'm going to use this model instead of the tennis ball. But sometimes, sometimes the the Earth, the Moon, and the Sun line up just perfectly where the shadow of the moon falls on the earth. Get it over here so everybody can see it. See, right now I have it where the shadow of the moon is on the earth. You see that? It doesn't always happen like that. As a matter of fact, it's very rare. That's an eclipse. And I'll talk about eclipses in a minute. But usually, it's not perfectly lined up. The moon's a little bit lower or a little bit higher so it doesn't run right in front of the sun. So you don't, you don't get an eclipse, usually. Eclipses are rare where it lines up perfectly. And so you got to line up just perfectly to get it. Look, I'm getting an eclipse. Can you see that shadow there? But usually no eclipse or no eclipse. Okay? So anyway, we call this the new moon. So the new moon is in the same direction as the sun. Now, over a course of a month, the moon starts moving, right? The moon orbits. So when it gets right here, it's in what we call the first quarter. It's a first quarter moon. And if you're looking at the moon from the Earth, you only see half of it. Where's my moon? This is just awesome. So you only see, because the sun lights up this half, and it doesn't light up this half. So you're only seeing half the moon. We call that the quarter moon, the first quarter moon. And you'll always see the right half of the moon if it's the first quarter moon. Looking from the earth, looking at the moon, the right half is lit up. Okay? And then the moon continues getting larger, and eventually it gets full because the moon ends up on the other side, over here, and the sun is back there, and it's really lighting up the whole moon. And you can see the whole thing. That's a full moon. That's a werewolf. That was good, wasn't it? Um, anyway. Um, so that's a full moon. And, and you're just seeing light, sunlight reflecting off the moon coming back. And you can see the whole thing. And then if it goes around even further, that's called a third quarter moon. You're seeing only half the moon again. And this time it's the left half looking from the earth. The left half is lit up. And then again, after 30 days or 29 days, it's back to where it started. You see what I'm saying? Now, when you can only see a little bit of the moon, here's the moon really 
in the same direction of the sun. If it moves this way, you can see a little bit of it. A little sliver of it's lit up when looking from the earth. Same as here. When the moon comes around here, you can see a little sliver of it still. And we call that a crescent moon. That's a crescent moon. And when you can see almost all of it, when it comes around here and you can see almost all of it, but it's not quite full, that's a gibbous moon. Gibbous means you can see most of it. Crescent means you can see less than half. Okay? There's also the terms waxing and waning. Waxing happens when the moon is getting bigger. So from here, from new moon, all the way around here, it's waxing. It's getting bigger each night. More and more of the moon can be seen. Now all of the moon can be seen. And now we're, now we're waning. It's getting smaller each night. Less and less of the moon can be seen. So we have new moon. We have a crescent moon. A waxing crescent. A quarter moon, which means it's a quarter of the way through its cycle, but you can really see half of it. A waxing gibbous, because you can see most of it now. A full moon. A waning gibbous. A third quarter moon. A waning crescent, because you can only see a little because the sun's way back there. It's only lighting up a little bit of it from your point of view. And finally, a new moon again. That's the whole cycle. Does that make sense? What do you think about that? Anyone? Questions? Comments? What if the Earth makes like a shadow? Oh, great question. Sometimes it lines up. Usually the moon is up high or down low, so it doesn't line up. But sometimes they're lined up exactly, and that's also called an eclipse. It's called a lunar eclipse. And the moon falls into the shadow of the earth. It does that about once every six months. And it looks like the moon is red. And I'll explain why in just a minute. So would that be like a harvest moon? No, the harvest moon is the first full moon in October. Or is it in August? I don't know. It's in one of those months. The harvest month. Probably October. I think it's October. And that's when that's a good time to to pick your crops. That's why they call it the harvest. Why? Like why would that be? Well, the ancients didn't have clocks and stuff like that. Uh, so when they they wait on the full moon when it came around after summer or something like that, and, then, and that's when they pay. Yeah. Good questions. Other questions? Yeah, they did a lot of stuff by the moon back then because. Again, they didn't have calendars and clocks as good as we have. Okay. No other questions here? Okay, so let's look at a lunar eclipse. Whoops! Why? Why is it doing that? Every so often, the sun, moon, and the earth line up to produce an eclipse. When the earth comes between the sun and the moon, it creates a lunar eclipse. So here we have Earth, Sun, Moon. The Earth is between the Moon and the Sun. So there's a shadow coming off the Earth that falls over the Moon. We call that a lunar eclipse. And the Moon will go into the shadow. The Moon's moving, right? So the Moon goes into the shadow, and you can't see the Moon very well for a while. It actually becomes red colored. And then it can, it'll come out of the shadow about six hours later. The whole thing lasts about six hours. You can look up online. I'll, I'll look it up and tell you when the next one's coming. They're fun to see. Of course, you can't see it if it's cloudy. We call that a lunar eclipse. It can be partial or total. A partial eclipse is when it's high enough or low enough where only a little bit of the moon is covered by shadow. A total eclipse is where the moon goes right through the middle and, and the, total, the moon is completely covered by shadow. And the moon appears red. Whoops.
Now here's where they're not lined up. Here's where the moon is not in the Earth's shadow. But here, if the moon is in the Earth's shadow, look, that's what it looks like. I think they write about these sometimes, blood red moon or something like that. It's supposed to be a sign of demons or terror or something like that. The reason why it's red like that, there's a very good reason. There is sunlight hitting the Earth's atmosphere and being bent. And the little, and the little bit of sunlight that hits the Earth, the Earth has a thin atmosphere here. And that atmosphere will bend the sunlight a little bit. And the blue colors, do you all know the, uh, the colors of the rainbow? Have you learned that before? Yes. What are they? Red. Roy G. Biv. Colors of the rainbow. Yeah, Roy G. Biv. you all remember that? Yes. Physics? Physical science? Red, orange, yellow, green, blue, indigo, and violet. Well, all of these colors over here are bent by the sun very easily. And so light, when, when light from the sun, which has all colors, comes through the Earth's atmosphere, the green and blues and violets are all bent down to the Earth. That's why the sky is blue. Because the, the light is hitting the atmosphere and the blue is being bent downward and you see the sky is blue. But the red kind of continues on and is only bent a little. So all the blue colors have been bent out of the light. The red is only bent slightly, hits the moon, bounces off the moon, and the moon looks red. Gosh, you're learning a lot of stuff today. Ugh. That's a good picture. Here's what it looks like. As you can see, the, the moon is creeping into the shadow. More and more, more and more into the shadow, and then finally it's completely in the shadow. That's when it's red, when it's completely in the shadow. And then it starts coming out of the shadow, and you kind of lose the red color. And the reason why you can't see that red anymore, because this is so bright, it, you can't really see the red compared to this. What they've done here is a camera effect. They've opened up the, the shutter so it, it's, uh, you can pick up that red color. But here, they've had to close the shutter down a little bit because this is so bright and you can't see the red anymore. Anyone here take photography? You probably know what I'm talking about. No? No one here take photography? Does anyone here ever answer any questions? No? No one? Okay. So that's a lunar eclipse when the moon is on this side and it falls in the Earth's shadow. You know what a solar eclipse is? The moon comes in front of the sun and casts a shadow over the earth. And it has to be lined up just right. You see that shadow? Can y'all see it? Look in the back here again. I want y'all to all be able to see it. If I get it just right, whoop, see that shadow? And just think, if you're standing here on St. Simon's, there's St. Simon's right there, and that shadow passes over you. You know what happens when that happens? The sun goes out. Can you imagine the ancients, the ancient peoples? I mean, this only happens once in a lifetime. Do you ever get a solar eclipse that just passes right over you? I mean, it's a rare event. Could you imagine if you were one of the ancient peoples and the sun went out one day? Imagine if that happened right when there was a war going on and somebody killed somebody and then the sun goes out. Imagine what effect that would have on everyone. They would be like, he just killed him and then the sun went out. This guy's some kind of god. Association's not going to be true. <laughs> That's exactly, but they didn't know that, see? So anyway, um, wow, that's some, an amazing thing. So we call that a solar eclipse. Now you can have a total, total eclipse or a partial eclipse. Let's look, and, and I'll go ahead and turn this off because I know it's bugging some of y'all. I'm going to go back to it. 
I want to go to I want to go to this first, and then I'll go back to it. Okay. Here's the sun shining on the moon. There are actually two sets of shadows, and it's a physics thing. There's a little shadow right there in the middle, and if you're within that shadow, the entire sun is blocked out. But there's a secondary shadow around that. It's kind of like a, a target with a bullseye in the middle. This secondary shadow, if you're in that, you can still see part of the sun, but you can't see all of the sun. So the primary shadow right here, that's called the umbra. If you're sitting in the primary shadow, that's what it looks like from space. If you're standing in there, you're in the umbra, and the entire sun is blocked. It only stays blocked by the moon, the entire sun does, for a few minutes. It's like, it's like six minutes or something like that. It's as long as an eclipse lasts, eight minutes. Like eight minutes of glory. Because why does it only last for a few minutes? Because the moon is moving. And the moon only blocks the sun for a minute, and then it keeps on going, and the sun reappears, you see. This partial eclipse in this area here lasts longer because it's bigger. So if you're in this area, that's a partial eclipse. And let me just show you. That's what, a, that's what a total eclipse looks like. The sun is blocked out. This part that you see here, that's actually part of the sun. It's called the corona. But it's a lot dimmer than the sun itself. And you can only see the corona of the sun during an eclipse. If the moon wasn't there blocking it, this would be too dim to see. The sun's so bright you would only see the sun, and this is real dim. See, again, they've opened up the iris on this camera and made this appear really bright. In actuality, it's not very bright. Are you getting this, McLean? Yes. I like this one. So here's what a partial eclipse looks like. If you're standing there, the sun kind of looks like that. It's sort of covered by the moon. If you're standing here, it looks like this. It's completely covered by the moon. So total eclipses only occur on a small region of the Earth in the umbra. Everywhere else, everywhere else sees a partial eclipse in the pen umbra. Everywhere else that's in the shadow, I should say. Questions right now about eclipses? I'm going to talk about annular eclipses next. When was the last eclipse? Great question. There is a there's a map on page 16. There it is. There's the map that shows some recent eclipses. Look, November 13th, there was one here. That was your birthday? Oh, that hasn't happened yet. Here, July 11th, there was one. 2010. Look, we got one coming. August 21st, 2017. Can we go right just north of here? Yeah, 2017. So in exactly four years, five years. You know where I'm going to be in five years? Right here. I'm going to be in North Carolina here watching the eclipse. I'm not going to be here. You know why? Because it'll be the only chance I get. Well, 2024, I could fly in out to Texas and watch it, maybe. But here, this is within driving distance. You just go right up the road. Actually, there's going to be one in... Um, what you should do is like run and uh, chase the eclipse to make it last as long as possible. In Australia? Yeah. I have a question. November Yeah, 18th. you're right. That's that's the same one here. It moves and comes around on the other side. Why are the ones at the bottom and the top so like thicker than Great question. Why are these thicker than these? That has to do with the map. This kind of projection, this kind of map is called like a mercator or something. And when you pull the map and make it flat, it makes everything on the bottoms look bigger. You know, 
Antarctica is not really this big. It doesn't span the whole globe. Greenland is not nearly that big. But the way the map is, it makes it bigger on the ends. So let me go back and let's talk about an annular eclipse. Didn't they have like some kind of eclipse like last year or two years ago? Yeah, it, there was a partial eclipse that came through uh, an annual. It was an annular eclipse. Annular eclipses aren't on that map. It came through California and went to Texas. An annular eclipse occurs because the moon isn't always the same distance from the Earth. Sometimes the moon is farther from the Earth, and sometimes it's closer to the Earth. And when the moon, no, that doesn't have to do with the tides, but I'll, I'll uh, yeah, you're right, it does affect the tides a little. But we'll talk about tides later. But anyway, the moon, when it's farther from the earth, the shadow that comes off the moon will not reach the earth, the umbral shadow. And here we see one of those cases. Here the moon is far from the earth, and this shadow doesn't reach the earth. It ends here. So if you were floating around in outer space right here, you'd see an eclipse. But if you're on Earth, you don't see a full eclipse. You see the moon inside the Earth, and you can still see all the edges of the sun. So the moon doesn't totally cover up the sun when the moon, when the moon is particularly far from the Earth. So we call that an annular eclipse. Annular eclipse. So we have your partial eclipse, where the moon is just covering part of the sun. Your total eclipse, where the moon completely covers the sun, except for the corona, which is very faint. And an annular eclipse, where the moon is right over the front of it, but it's too far away to cover the whole sun. We did have an annual, annular eclipse, I think it was earlier this year, that came through California. I called my sister who lives in Los Angeles that came right over them, and I said, go look, you're having an annular eclipse. And she said uh, that her husband told her not to look at it because it would hurt her eyes. And I said, you need to wear like several pairs of sunglasses. And she said, I don't have several pairs of sunglasses. Isn't that a great picture? That's what it would really look like. Again, that, that iris has been opened, so you can see that better. It's actually darker than that. Oh, that's a cool picture. That guy is up near the North Pole. Isn't that cool? put a solar filter on a telescope so you can use your telescope and look right at the sun. I have a solar filter on the telescope that we have in the lab and I'll show you. We'll do it one day. We'll look at the sun. You ever looked at the sun through a telescope? It's really cool. This is the shadow as seen from the moon. Picture. 
the, the moon orbiting the Earth diagonally, in this case, every time the moon comes around, the moon is above the plane of the sun and the Earth. So the shadow of the moon goes above the Earth. And over here, the shadow of the moon goes below the Earth. So the only time they can be lined up, it, it's, it has to be kind of uh, on the side here. What month is that? It differs. Um, it doesn't happen on the same month every year because that's a good question. I mean, it should have been around the same like, season, shouldn't it? I think there's something about this plane that changes. Well, let me check on that. That's a good question. I don't think it's the same month every year for some for one reason or another. So the plane rotates too? Yeah, I think so. I think the plane changes or moves. I mean, it's the same plane, but I'm not sure. That's a good question. Uh, let me look that up before I answer that. Anyway, you can see that there's only a couple of times where uh, where this eclipse is favorable, the way the planes line up. Let's see what this is. It's because of. It's because we have the moon that we enjoy the greatest astronomical spectacular, a total eclipse of the sun. There'd be more if it weren't for a five degree tilt of the moon's orbit with respect to the plane of the ecliptic, here in green. During each orbit of Earth, the moon twice intersects the ecliptic plane. Here. to occur, Earth, Moon, and Sun must all be in line at an intersection. Imagine you, the viewer, the Sun. As alignment approaches, here's the total eclipse. If the intersection is on the far side of Earth, the event is a lunar eclipse. A lunar eclipse works like this. Moving into the shadow of Earth, the Moon turns blood red. Indirect light from the sun is bent and filtered by Earth's atmosphere and projected onto the moon. Lasting up to an hour and three quarters, a lunar eclipse is always seen on the night side of Earth. Now an eclipse of the sun. But because the moon's orbit is slightly elliptical, this eclipse isn't total. The moon's shadow doesn't quite reach us. The result is an annular eclipse. The moon, at its farthest from Earth, is too distant to fully obscure the sun. This time, the moon is closer in its orbit, close enough for the dark inner shadow, the umbra, to sweep Earth at supersonic speed. Such an alignment happens about 70 times a century. On Earth, the umbra is creating a total eclipse. The outer penumbra delivers a partial. For those in the shadow of the umbra, and with a clear sky, totality verges on the magical. As the moon creeps over the brilliant solar disk, this partial phase can last an hour and a half. The diamond ring, the moon is shutting off the sun. Then, as the last beams twinkle through the lunar mountains, Bailey's beams. And totality. It happens because the sun is 400 times larger than the moon, while the moon is 400 times closer to us than is the sun.
largest object in the sky. Both the fascinating partner and the curse of astronomers denied the dark skies essential for the best observing. The moon, our mysterious neighbor. Mysterious because the ancients must have puzzled at its monthly phases. The moon has no light of its own. It merely reflects the sunlight, constantly illuminating half its face. In the 27.3 days of the lunar orbit, the amount of lit surface we see from Earth changes day by day, like this. The moon isn't in the star maps of this graphic guide. As with those wandering stars, the planets, the moon has a different dance to the stars of the cosmos. Shut that off if you want.